Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'm going to introduce the three elementary row operations that we will use to solve linear systems in matrix notation. Now before I give the row operations, first remember that we have these three operations for linear systems. The first operation says we can interchange two equations. The second one says we can multiply all the terms of one equation by a non-zero constant. And finally, the third operation says we can replace one equation by the sum of itself and a multiple of another equation. Now we proved that applying any one of these three operations to a linear system results in a new linear system with the same solution set. And if you wanna see the proof of that, you can click the link here. All right, so since these three operations don't change the solution set for a linear system, these three operations are the main tools we use to solve linear systems. So if we're given some linear system S represented by these linear equations here, we know that we would use these three operations to solve the linear system. Now what about if we consider the augmented matrix of this system? You can see that this augmented matrix contains all the important information about the system, and the notation is clearly more convenient than writing out this system every time. So naturally, we'll want to be able to solve systems using this notation instead of using this notation. But in order to solve systems using matrix notation, we'll need to construct three new operations resembling these operations above, but where our new operations can be applied to matrices instead of linear systems. So for each of these three operations above, we'll need a corresponding matrix operation that we can apply to the augmented matrix, and that will essentially make the same change to the augmented matrix as its corresponding operation above would make when applied to the linear system. So we're going to want to construct three matrix operations that can be applied to the augmented matrix, and these operations will be called the elementary row operations. Now notice that each row of the augmented matrix represents an equation of the linear system. For example, the first row here represents the first equation of the linear system, where the a sub 1 1 a sub 1 2 all the way up to a sub 1 n are the coefficients written on the left hand side of the equation and then the b sub 1 here is the constant on the right hand side of the equation similarly the second row of the augmented matrix represents the second equation of the linear system and so on so this tells us that the notion of an equation in a linear system is equivalent to the notion of a row in a matrix so to construct our three elementary row operations, it makes sense for us to modify the three operations we had above by replacing the word equation with the word row every time it appears. So for the first operation, instead of interchanging two equations in the system, the first row operation should allow us to interchange two rows of the matrix. Similarly, for the second row operation, instead of multiplying all the terms of one equation by a non-zero constant, the second row operation should say that we can multiply all the terms of one row by a non-zero constant. And then finally, for the third row operation, instead of replacing one equation by the sum of itself and a multiple of another equation in the system, our row operation should say that we can replace one row by the sum of itself and a multiple of another row of the matrix. So these are our three elementary row operations. Now these three row operations can be applied to any matrix, but for the moment we're only interested in applying these operations to the augmented matrix of a linear system. So let's go through some examples now. For the first example, suppose we have this augmented matrix, and suppose that we want to apply the first type of row operation to this matrix by interchanging the first and second rows of our matrix. So if we just interchange these first and second rows, we'll end up with this new augmented matrix, where now the first row of this matrix was the second row of our previous matrix, and the second row of this matrix was the first row of our previous matrix. So this is an example of the first type of row operation. Now to see an example of the second type of row operation, let's consider this augmented matrix. And now in order to make this first term equal to one, we're gonna wanna multiply all the terms of the first row by one half. So we're going to use the second type of row operation to multiply every term of the first row by one half. So when we do that, this two will become a one, this will become a negative two, this will become a one, and this will become a four. So we'll get this new augmented matrix. Finally, for an example of the third row operation, consider this augmented matrix, and let's apply the third type of row operation by replacing the second row with the sum of itself and negative three times the first row. So we'll multiply the first row by negative three and then add that to the second row to give us our new row 2. Now the first term of our row 2 for our new matrix will equal negative 3 times 1 
plus 3, which equals 0. The second term will equal negative 3 times negative 2 plus negative 2, which equals 4. The third term will be negative 3 times 1 plus 4, which equals 1. And then finally, the final term will be equal to negative 3 times 4 plus 4, which equals negative 8. So we get this new augmented matrix where this second row is what we got by adding row 2 to negative 3 times row 1. Now that you've seen some examples using these three elementary row operations, I have one remark and that is that these three elementary row operations are reversible. So if you consider the first operation and suppose that we interchange two rows, then we could reverse it by interchanging those two rows again. So if we look at the example shown earlier, where we started with this original matrix and then we applied the first row operation by interchanging the first and second rows to give us this matrix, then we could undo that by starting with this matrix and then applying the first row operation to this matrix by switching the first and second rows and then we'd end up with the matrix that we originally started out with. So to reverse an operation of the first type, you would just apply that same operation again. Now let's see how we can reverse the second operation. So let's assume we applied a row operation of the second type to some matrix by scaling a row of the matrix by some non-zero constant C, meaning we just multiplied every term of that row by this constant C. Then to reverse that operation, we would just need to multiply the new row by the reciprocal of C. So if we look back at our example for the second type of row operation, where we started out with this matrix and then applied the second type of row operation by multiplying the first row by one half, and we ended up with this matrix, then to reverse this operation, then we would start with this new matrix, and then from there we would multiply every term of the first row by the reciprocal of one half, which means we would multiply every term of the first row by two which is again an operation of the second type. And then when we do that, we would end up with this matrix, which is just our original matrix. So you can see that this operation reversed the first operation. Now finally, let's look at the reverse of the third operation. So let's say that we apply the third row operation to some matrix. So we replaced one row of the matrix by the sum of itself and a multiple of another row. Now without loss of generality, let's just assume that we're talking about the first and second rows of the matrix. So let's say that we replace the second row with the sum of itself and C times the the first row where C is just some constant then to reverse that we would apply the third type of row operation to the new matrix by replacing the new row 2 with the sum of itself and negative C times row 1 so if we look at our example from before where we started with this original matrix and then applied a row operation of the third type by replacing the second row with the sum of itself and negative 3 times the first row which gave us this new matrix so then to reverse that, we'll start with this matrix, and then from there we can replace the second row with the sum of itself and three times the first row. So we'll be applying a row operation of the third type to add three times the first row to the second row. Now when we do that, the first term will equal three times one plus zero, which is equal to three. The second term will be three times negative two plus four, which is equal to negative two. The third term will equal three times one plus one, which is equal to four. And then the fourth term will equal three times four plus negative eight, which is equal to four. And so we would end up with this matrix, which is the same as our original matrix, which shows that this operation reversed the first operation that we applied. So we've seen that each of these three operations can be reversed. Now I'm gonna stop the video here. In the upcoming videos, we'll talk about what it means for two matrices to be row equivalent. So that video will be coming up, but that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.